Bigfoot and the many claimed subspecies have been investigated for many years. Various types of proof have been gathered over this time, some more convincing than others. The discovery of a body or partial remains of one of these creatures would make headlines worldwide. So, if a living relative to one of these animals lived, you would think that it would be known globally. There is such a case, a story known to those that have an interest in Sasquatch and wild men but not known by the wider population. A story that has a Russian beast, a woman and her children at its center. I am of course talking about the Abanaya, Zana and her sons and daughters. Let's take a look. Welcome to IF, videos on history, mystery and the strange. Hit that subscribe button and ring the bell so you never miss a video again. This cryptid is said to be one of the Russian species of Bigfoot, a little less well known when compared to the Almus. As with the Almus, its home is said to be deep in the Caucasus mountain range. The Caucasus Mountains is a mountain system in Eurasia lying between the Black and Caspian Seas in the Caucasus region. It occupies parts of Russia, Georgia, Azerbaijan and Armenia, drifting mainly from northwest to southeast. The Caucasus Mountains are made up of two separate ranges, the Greater Caucasus in the north and the Lesser Caucasus in the south, this providing a huge sparsely populated area perfect for a species like the Almus and other wild men to make their home. The Abanuayu are around the same size as a human, but way more muscular, with a thin covering of reddish black hair, a low brow, reddish eyes and high cheekbones. This appearance being what many think of when they imagine a Neanderthal. In fact, it has been suggested that they could indeed be a relic population that has survived into modern times. As with Neanderthals, it is said they are adept at making and using stone tools, but do not seem capable of speech or if they do have speech, it is of a type we cannot understand, sounding like a mix of goggles and groans. This brings us to Zana or Zanya, a woman who was claimed to be one of these primitive human-like creatures. Appearing to local villagers around 1850, she first avoided people but returned to watch the goings-on in these villages, eventually being captured by a group of hunters from the village. They had been scared by her watching over them and feared that she may be dangerous. The tale says that Zana had a dark skin, long dark hair and was of immense strength. She was wild and animal-like in her nature. This is just the start of a long ordeal for the wild woman. Over the coming years, she would be treated and traded as if she was an animal. She was bought and sold many times and after passing through a series of owners before ending up with a man called Edgi Geneba, he took her away, shackled and chained to his estate in the village of Tekhina on the Mokva River 78 kilometers from Tsukumi, where she remained until her death in 1890. In all of the years that Zana lived with various village men, she never developed the ability to speak. She was, however, tamed and could complete chores for her owners. It would seem her duties would go beyond housework, with Zana birthing children, four of which grew to adulthood. Zana was pregnant several times by various men and giving birth without assistance. She always washed the newborn child in cold water springs. The half-breed infants, unable to survive these ablutions, died. Zana did eventually have four living children who were taken from her and raised by other villagers. The sons were Ziada, Huit, and the girls were Kozana and Gamasa. The father or fathers of these children remain unknown, but I think it would be a safe bet to say it was the men who traded her. Today, her children have their own families, and Zana's descendants are dispersed across Abkhazia. This is when Russian professors Alexandria Mashkostyev and Boris Pozhnyovyev enter the picture. During the 1960s, they investigated the story. They searched for the remains of Zana, but could not find them. This, despite the fact she was allegedly buried in the family graveyard. They did, however, find the skull of her son, Huit, who had passed away in 1954. Anthropologist and Bigfoot researcher Grover Krantz brought his scientific expertise to the case and in 2009 took the skull of Zana's son to the New York laboratory for DNA sequencing, this in the hope of uncovering a genealogical lineage that was outside of the norm. This analysis revealed Huit's skull to be 100% homo sapien. This discovery 
obviously cast a shadow of doubt over the story of Zana. Was she in fact a human woman who may have grown up in the wild never learning to speak? Could she have had a disability? This explaining why she was alone in the woods. Maybe her family had abandoned her to the wilds, unable to cope with a disabled child. Her disability also meaning she was unable to communicate with the villagers she stumbled upon after years of living alone in the mountains. Some say no, she was an ancient relic species of humanoid and that her genes were so similar to our own that we lack the testing to find her genetic code. The fact that the tests are being carried out on her offspring further diluting results which would show her to be a unique species separate to modern humans. If Zana's remains could be found and tested, the truth would be uncovered. They say that Zana was a surviving member of a thought to be extinct hominid, most probably either Neanderthal or Denisovian. They point to the idea that these two types of hominid are said to have gone extinct because of two major factors. The first, conflict and competition with early modern humans. The second, interbreeding. The Neanderthals and Denisovians were bred out of existence, their genetic makeup becoming part of our own. This would make the testing of wit appear to be identical to that of a modern man. The interbreeding between different early hominid species was not the exception. It was the norm. This according to Omir Gokumen, PhD Assistant Professor of Biological Sciences at the University of Buffalo's College of Arts and Sciences. The expert has researched human evolution and discovered an important mucine protein called MUC7 which is found in human saliva. The doctor said, when we looked at the history of the gene that codes for the protein, we see the signature of archaic admixture in modern day sub-Saharan African populations. This protein is, in part, responsible for the slimy consistency of saliva and helps it to bind to microbes. In turn, this helps keep the body free from disease causing bacteria. The doctor and his team studied this MUC7 gene looking at a group of more than 2,500 modern human genomes. This revealed that a group from Sub-Sahara Africa had a wildly different version than others. On closer analysis, it was revealed to be even more different to modern humans than Neanderthal and Denisovan MUC7 genes. This discovery suggests that ancient human ancestors can be traced to these populations of hominid and that sexual rendezvous with what has become known as a ghost species did occur. Could Zana have been a member of this ghost species? Zana was said to have been very tall with a massive and broad body. She possessed huge breasts and buttocks, thick muscular arms and legs, and fingers that were longer and thicker than those of a regular human. She could also splay her toes widely and move all of them apart from the big toe. Her face was said to be terrifying, broad, with high cheekbones, a flat nose with turned out nostrils, muzzle-like jaw, and wide mouth with large teeth, a low forehead and eyes of a reddish tinge. Zana was stronger than the strongest man and was said to be able to crush the hardest walnut in a single hand. She could outrun a horse and swim across the wild Mokva River even in a violent high tide. Seemingly without effort, she lifted with one hand an 80 kilo sack of flour and carried it uphill from the watermill to the village. She climbed trees to get fruit and to gorge herself with grapes, she would pull down a whole vine growing around the tree. She ate whatever was offered to her, including hominy and meat with her bare hands and had an appetite of enormous gluttony. Over her life, it was said that she had no grey hair, lost no teeth and remained strong and fit until her death. This description of her physical characteristics and abilities matches the many stories of Bigfoot and Bigfoot-like creatures found around the world. So, can we assume that these animals are far more closely related to us than we would like to think? Are they the missing link between us and some of our earliest relatives? Until the remains of Zana are found or a body from a Sasquatch is discovered, we are left to ponder these questions and ask if Zana was an Almus and the proof that is needed to confirm the existence of these cryptid hominids. What do you think, Almus, Neanderthal or something else? Let me know in the comments below. As always, if you like what I do here on the channel, hit that red button, like and share. You can catch the latest by searching We Are If. Thanks so much for watching.
I'll see you next time.